Welcome to Maka Root TV 314. Uncle Justin Nell, family, this is your brother, the Bianchi Batama Tulu Neferam on Ra. Makaru is a phrase meaning true of voice in ancient Kemet. The acclaim was given to him or her who is right. Here on Makaru TV 314, that's what we stand for and believe. And as such, we will be bringing the truth of ancient Kemet and ancient Africa to the people. Makaru TV 314 is where the truth lives. We will explore the true history, spirituality, and culture of ancient Africa, particularly that of ancient Kemet. We look forward to you joining us as we edify the people. Hotel. Uncle Jab Seneb, I'm Queen Mother Eni Ture Aset Akua Kiti Haru with the Temple of Het Haru, and you're listening to the voices of my aunt. But before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and do our Hesi, our chant. I'll say it in Meta Netter, and then I will translate it into English. Ha Netter, Ampu Pa Maat, Ank Wise De Jeb, Ank Unja Seneb, Uben Nefer Akar Pa Enbu Haru Maat. In English, that translates to how sweet is the truth, life, power, stability, life, prosperity, and health, rising always in divine excellence with my at all day, every day, Ashe. And family, when I say Ashe, it simply means that we are on the same accord and that we agree. We have our special co-host this evening with us, our very own divine king, and creator of Paradigm Shift 314, as well as Makaru 314, Seba Pianki Pata Matulu, Amin Ra. And um, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and get started. Peace, peace, family. So we have a special presentation for you. Uh, we're going to get into some misconceptions about ancient Kemet. This is something I'll be doing on my new program, it's kind of a sister program or brother program, whatever you want to say, uh, to uh, the voices of my eye called Roman Back to Kemet. But I wanted to do this first presentation on this program. So we'll get into it as I do our screen share. And can you see my screen, Queen Mo? Yes, I can. All right. So as you can see, Makaru TV 314 presents Correcting the Misunderstandings About Ancient Kemet, Volume 1. And this is part of the introduction. Why is Kemet an important component in the struggle for Black spiritual, mental, and physical liberation? Did you know that in Kemet, or Africa slash or black people invented writing, science, medicine, agriculture, history, philosophy, politics, spirituality, warfare, and combat strategy. What about agricultural science, astronomy, culture, cosmology, literature, and art? So these are very important components uh, aspects of our daily lives, even right now today, that were started by ancient Africans that look just like you and I. And so I think it's important that we proliferate that information because our history, contrary to popular belief, did not start with slavery. It didn't start with us getting on our hands and knees praising the white Jesus. It started with us bringing civilization to the world. It started with us setting the standard for the rest of the world. So I'm gonna make sure we put that forward. The ancient historian Herodotus on the splendor of Kemet. It has more wonders in it than any other country in the world 
and provides more works that defy description than any other place. Herodotus was uh, renowned as the ancient world's pro preeminent historian. And so I wanted to make sure I put his quote in this presentation because a lot of our people, for whatever reasons, give more gravity and weight to what Europeans had to say about our ancestors than even what we say or what our, our other ancestors had to say. And so I want to let it, let it be seen for the record what this European thought when he left his European borders and his other Mediterranean borders and came into Kemet and saw what Black African people had contributed to the world stage. In this presentation, I will attempt to clear up some of the many misconceptions about what the ancient Kemetic people believed about what we now call God or what they would have called Neter or the one who is all, Hotep. Uncle Jasenev to my grandmaster teacher, Amari M. Seneferu, Baba Saber of the Kemetic spiritual tradition, Pan-African Garbiite, and founder and leader of the Temple of Het Haru, a man who is always Makaru. And for those of you who have forgotten what Makaru means, it means one who is true of voice. Yeah. Uncle Jasenev as well to the chief elder of the Temple of Het Haru, Rennie Unk Makaru, and Queen Elder Regina Dennis Nana, and the rest of the Temple of Het Haru family. Hotel. Let us begin. The ancient people of Kemet believed there was only one being in existence, period. That being was described as nature. If the way it sounds reminds you of nature, it should, because it encompasses all of nature. According to ancient Kemetic spirituality, everything in nature is an aspect of that being, including you and I. Nature is the divine creator and first of itself and then expanding itself, thereof the result being all of creation. Why? So that it may know itself. The tree is nature having an experience as a tree. The blade of grass is nature having an experience as a blade of grass. And we, yes, you and I are nature having a human experience. In the beginning, there was none. An ocean is a multitude of drops. Whatever is created out of none has the very ingredients within it to create all of existence, but in different forms. Therefore, creation is representative or symbolic of those elements in which it originated from. By analogy, for example, flour is a basic ingredient common to cakes and cookies. With flour, there is the potential to create many different things within none or the ingredients to create anything in existence. Another analogy you can consider here is that none is an ocean of chaos. However, everything in existence comes out of none. Therefore, every drop in the ocean makes up the ocean, and the ocean is a multitude of drops. A drop is the same thing as the ocean, but not the same magnitude. That's comedic spiritual science basics. Out of none comes nature, nature, and all of creation. They believe that ultimately everything in creation cycled its way back to the nun and resurrected or was reborn again in its oneness. The nature. Nature equals principles of nature. The word nature is a cognate of nature. Don't they both sound the same? Originally, Originally, Egyptologists erroneously interpreted the symbolic rep representations of the Neteru 
as the word gods. This is why most people today believe that many gods were worshiped by the commissions. This ideology was through the prism of a paradigm that believed that ancient Africans were too ignorant to have a science elevated beyond our science in modern times. The ancient African cosmology was based on an elevated understanding of nature. The Netaru were not gods, but universal principles or laws. Nater do not think or act consciously. They are not big people in the sky as the Greeks and Romans ignorantly believed. Nater, Amun Ra and Ptah in the laden hymns, the moon, Ptah and Re are regarded as a trinity who are distant gods, but with unity, polarity. The three gods are one yet the Egyptian elsewhere insist on the separate identity of each of the three. This unit, unity and priority is expressed in one text only. Nature, Amun Ra and Pata continue. These Nature and their functions are the foundation of creation. There is nothing in creation that does not contain an aspect of the celestial nature. Nature would not exist without the components of nature that is created from. Examples, Amun, Ra, and Ptah. Amun equals acknowledgement of the hidden or mysterious. This aspect of creation represents our potentiality. Ra equals the animating spirit of all things physical and non-physical. It is not just a representative of the sun. The sun is simply one representation or symbol of this aspect of creation. As are all things in the universe, this aspect of creation represents our actuality. Pata is the principle of conscious thought. This aspect of creation represents our potentiality, our moon, and our actuality, Ra, in unity with one another. This enables us to become divine creators in and of ourselves. The relationship between Amin, Ra, and Ptah is the same as that of the celestial, duat, and terrestrial states. To further illustrate the connection between these three aspects, see steam, water, and the ice cube. Three items that are of the same essence, but are in different states of being and are expressing themselves in different ways. The paths of spiritual liberation. I believe that the individual Consciousness, consciousness of one's soul can become enlightened by embracing three universal principles, those being Aset, Asar, and Haru. And in so doing, one can enjoy a continuous process of becoming. The first path one can travel on their journey to enlightenment is through the path of Aset, where one evolves and adapts as time passes and situations arise. Aset was a wife, a mother, a resurrector, and a protector. She evolved and became whatever she needed to be. The second path is the indirect path called Osar, in which one has to go through many cycles of life incarnations to gain enlightenment and the ability to resurrect or be reborn into oneness of noon. If you are reading this with your physical eyes, Guess which path you are on. You got it, the Osarian path. The last path is the direct path of Haru, or the path of one's higher self, in which enlightenment happens all at once. There's a huge misunderstanding of multiple gods. Nature, nature, principles of nature, is a cognitive nature. Don't they both sound the same? Originally, 
Egyptologists erroneously interpreted the symbolic representations of the Neteru as the word gods. This is the reason most people today believe that many gods were worshiped by the ancient people of Kemet. This ideology was through the prism of the paradigm that believed the ancient Africans were too ignorant to have a science elevated beyond our science in modern times. The ancient African cosmology was based on an elevated understanding of nature. The Netaru were not gods, but universal principles or laws. Nature do not think consciously. They are not big people in the sky, as Greeks and Romans ignorantly believe. In our updated language, they are universal laws or mathematic, mathematical formulas. They preeminate nature and we can consciously act on them. Too many ignorantly and erroneously think that think the nature are big powerful humans. This is a much deeper knowledge of understanding the idea of what we call God. God is not a bigger, more powerful virgin, version of a human or looks like a man. And for those who think we're being redundant, we are, but sometimes redundancy is needed to hammer home the point. So bear with us. The Greek mind cannot grasp the African genius and spiritual connection with nature. They are universal laws that do not have the ability of themselves to modify the orientation of their behavior. In other words, natural laws can't think and act. The concept of laws without the ability to think really knocks out the idea of a God that you need to worship and make him feel needed and appreciated so he doesn't get jealous or angry. That idea came from men that could not comprehend the nuance of African spiritual science. Jeez. God is not a bigger, more powerful version of a human that plays favorites and has chosen people. That's enlightened, unenlightened, Greek and Roman religious thinking. Fallacies we were taught about ancient Kemet. The fallacy that has been taught is that these were three competing theologies. Egyptologists had to make up a reason for what they couldn't grasp. That is false. It is a misunderstanding of how the comedians viewed the Godhead or divine nature, nature of the all. A good analogy to explain how the ancient Egyptians thought of the Godhead would be to think of water that can exist in three different states, such as steam, water, and ice. They are all the same essence, just in different states. So, a man, Ra, and Pata were not different gods or beings. They are three states of existence for the one source. Another way to consider the idea of a man, Ra, and Pata is that they are three functions of the same thing acknowledged in their different states within creation. This is the comedic spiritual science basis. This would be analogous to a person that is a father, a doctor, and a little league football coach. They are not competing aspects of the individual. They are all the same person, but serving in three different functions. So goes the trinity of Amun, Ra, and Ptah. They are not competing theologies, but a clarification of the Godhead and its functions by the committee. Within none are all the ingredients and all aspects that can potentially create anything in the universe. In closing, for now, through the African comedic paradigm, everything becomes a symbol of that which created it. This is why the ancient Africans would inscribe on temples, know thyself, and you will know nature. In today's terminology, we state the idea as you are God slash goddess. It is not arrogance. It is simple knowledge. On one level, because mankind is an aspect of nature, 
and therefore a form of God. As I stated in the beginning, from the comedic perspective, we are nature having a human experience. As above, so below. Hotel, Uncle Ma. The kingdom of heaven is within you, and whoever shall know himself or herself shall find it. Ashe. Ashe. And that's peace. So we hope that you enjoyed uh, this show, The Voices of My Aunt. Um, before we leave, we want to give some acknowledgments and do us and thank you to our Baba Saba Amari Sneferu, do it to our Queen Elder Regina Dennis Nana, do it to our Elder Rini Ankh, do it to my parents, Roy and Princella Small, for my existence, do it to Queen Afua, do it to Queen Riketti. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always, I always jack up her name. <laughs> help me, help me with her name. Uh, Riketti, I mean. Thank you. Do I? Do I? So I want to say do I to this queen because of her awesome teachings of the meta netter and the meta nature. I also want to give a special do I to my co-host and creator of our channels, Paradigm Shift 314, as well as Makaru 314. And there will be another one coming soon. And that will be our very own Saba Pianki Patamatulu. Nefra Aman Ra. Do I, do I. I want to give a, a do I to our, our queen mother, her eminence, Annie Ture, I said, Akua Kitty Haru. Do I. Uh, want to say Uncle Justin Ed once again, and do I to my master teacher, Baba Saber, Mariam Seneferu, uh, giving honors to Elder Rennie Yonk, my Karu. Queen Elder Regina Dennis Nana, the rest of the Temple of Heteru family. Particularly, I want to give shout outs to the Makaru Squad, uh, my brother, the Phenom, Kimra Nasu, uh, King Nasu, Brother Usa, and Brother Metu. And I want to give a, a special shout out to my blood brother. Uh, the mind percolator himself, Nuri Shabaka, Ursa Mahad Ra. And uh, I just want to say we we here to edify the people. This is Makaru TV 314, home of the truth. And this has been the Voices of My Eye. Ashe. Peace. From these pagan and heathen ancestors. <laughs> Amasu! Amasu and Pa Utara, Sauk Su and Ra and Pa Utara, Awu to Awura, Makethi Pa Herura. Give yourself to the divine, keep yourself daily for the divine, and do it tomorrow as you do it today. Uh, where we going with it? Uh, uh, now where we going with it? A man, 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 a Style and profiling, it's been a long time. How many years? About 3,000. Uh, Man, we got to bring it back. Uh, the days and times of living is getting whack. I seen kingdoms come and I seen kingdoms fall. You can check it for yourself, you can read it on the wall. Like graffiti on the wall, metal nets is what it's called. I taught y'all in the past, now I'm back to teach you all how to elevate and repent from filthy ways. I know it's hard, but it feels good to fast for 30 days. I got y'all searching for the land that's across the burning. And sands with the men turn into gods and the gods turn into men the jewel of the Nile is in the motherland each one teach one so go tell your brother man you're feeling down then you got to snap back like a rubber band lord going back to Kemet styling profiling it's been a long time about 3,000 
Man, we got to bring it back. Uh, the days and times of living is getting whack. I'm going back to Kemet, styling, profiling. It's been a long time. How many years? About 3,000. Uh, Man, we got to bring it back. Uh, the days and times of living is getting whack. Hey. All the words I chant when I come forth by day From the night, these sacred chapters I recite Do my voodoo every day till I feel some things are right Speaking in words of power, speakers get blown Ancient tradition, deep in your bones Ancient wisdom, speaking in poems Melodies take you deep in the zone I'm going back to Kemet, styling, profiling It's been a long time, about 3,000 Man, we got to bring it back uh, 